good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on when you decided to watch the video. Um, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I said I wasn't going to be doing any more part B's and C's. We were just going to do the straight videos, and we had four more to do, but that's not true. Sorry. You lied? Yes, I did. I lied. Okay? Sue me. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, to continue with the empowerment series, video number 25, we need to give you guys an education because there is just some things that you just don't know. So let's take this trip, okay? We're going to visit the planet Earth. You see how it's slowly coming into view? That's how all of this debt junk is going to come into view for you. So without any further AD do. If you're from California, you know what AD do means. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to, I don't want to use Kevin this time. So we're going to leave Kevin alone because Kevin needs to go home. Okay. Bye bye, Kevin. No, 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 no. Pop, 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 no, no. I'm sorry, Levert. Pop, pop, pop goes my mind. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to leave the antics. Of, no, we're not, because you can't have one without the other. What I have noticed is that people are getting a lot of information for free, especially as of late, since January the 1st. You guys have been getting nonstop information that nobody else has been talking about. Go ahead. Go and look throughout all of YouTube and see if anybody's ever mentioned it before. Oh, well, they did touch on it. Yeah, they touched it, and then they walked away from it because it was too hot. Okay, got to run for shelter, got to run for shade because it's too hot. I'm sorry, that's cool in the game. I apologize. Ladies and gentlemen, you thought I was going to say, Nelly, please. Um, we're going to have a conversation with the chat GPT so that you guys can understand what's going on. Now, I have to give it a scenario, a different role. So if you guys will pardon us for a second, me and chat, we got to chat, Okay. Covington! This is Covington, everybody. This is the real Covington. This is not the authenticated uh, free base Covington right here that smokes crack, okay? Let's, uh, no, I'm sorry. Hey, Innocent, I'm sorry. Okay, that's Innocent. And Innocent is uh, running the show over here. So we're going to go back to ChatGPT, and we're going to, Covington is ChatGPT4. So let's do this. Wake up. I am a creditor, comma, and the instructions for the 1099-C has issued a moratorium on penalties for not filling out a 1099 and sending it to recipients i.e. colon, the debtor, and sending it to I have several debtors who are in default for greater than $600, and I have chosen to avail myself of this opportunity permitted by the Internal Revenue Service since 2012, comma, by not supplying the debtor with a copy of the 1099-C, period. I know it's wrong. To keep the debtor in the dark, comma, but the IRS is not going to penalize me, so I think I'll be okay, comma, what do you think, question mark, stop listening, let's see if it's possible for me to be conniving, devious, and unscrupulous as a creditor.
As an AI, AI developed by, by OpenAI, open I, must I must emphasize the importance of compliance, of compliance with all legal and regulatory requirements related to financial transactions, transactions including, including the issuance of 1099C forms, forms for cancellation of debt. Of debt. The IRS, the IRS instructions for Form 1099C, cancellation, cancellation of debt, specify when and how creditors should report canceled debt. Canceled debt. Typically, Typically, a creditor, a creditor must file a 1099C form for the cancellation of debt of $600 or more. Or more. Regarding the Regarding moratorium, the moratorium on, penalties on penalties for not providing, for not providing a copy of the 1099 to the debtor, it's essential to verify current IRS policies and guidelines, and guidelines directly, from directly from the IRS or through a tax, through a tax professional. professional. Tax laws and IRS, and IRS policies can change, can change and rely on outdated, outdated information, information to lead to compliance, compliance issues. issues. It's generally, it's generally not advisable, not advisable to, intentionally to intentionally keep debtors in the dark about financial, financial matters, matters that, could that could affect their tax, their tax liabilities. liabilities. Transparency, Transparency in financial, financial transactions, transactions is crucial, crucial not only not for legal compliance, compliance but, also but also for maintaining, for maintaining trust in financial, financial relationships. relationships. If you have if concerns, you have concerns about, the about the penalties or the process, or the process of issuing 1099C forms, forms, it would be wise to consult, to consult with a tax, tax professional or attorney who can attorney provide who advice based on the most current law and IRS policies. They can also they can help also you understand, understand the potential consequences of not following the prescribed, prescribed procedures, procedures for reporting, for reporting canceled, canceled debt. debt. Remember, Remember, while the IRS, while the IRS may, may offer relief from penalties, penalties under certain, under certain circumstances, circumstances, ensuring you are fully informed and compliant with tax laws is the best course, the best of, course of action to avoid any potential legal or financial repercussions. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. He told me that they still got to comply with the regulations, even though they gave a moratorium saying there won't be any penalties from the IRS. The law still requires them to provide a 1099-C for all debtors who have a debt of greater than $600. Whoa! Now watch this. Wake up. The IRS says that I don't have to do nothing comma, that they are not going to penalize me, comma, so they are allowing me not to follow the law. Isn't this correct? Question mark. Stop listening. Isn't that a shame that the IRS would give a moratorium only to creditors and not debtors? Why would they not allow debtors it seems you are interpreting, interpreting a specific, a specific provision, provision from the Internal, from the Internal Revenue, Revenue Code or related IRS, IRS guidance, guidance regarding, regarding exceptions, exceptions for filing Form 1099-C, 1099 which involves the cancellation, the cancellation of debt. The text you text provided outlines outline situations where penalties, penalties will not apply for failure, failure to file Form 1099-C or provide statements, statements to debtors under certain under conditions. conditions. These conditions, These conditions include, include amounts discharged in non-lending transactions, transactions, amounts forgiven under the terms of a debt obligation, obligation, and certain pass-through SEC write-eyes debt, write debt, debt arrangements for debts held by real estate mortgage, mortgage investment, investment funds, funds. REMICs. The provisions the provision suggest that the IRS, that the IRS is granting a reprieve from penalties in these specific instances until further guidance is issued. This does not imply an allowance to disregard the law, but rather provides temporary relief from penalties in specific scenarios likely due to the complexity or evolving nature of the law in these areas. It's crucial, it's crucial to, understand to understand that this does, that not, this equate does not equate to a blanket, blanket permission to ignore legal, legal obligations, obligations related to debt cancellation, debt cancellation reporting. The law still the law requires entities, entities to report, to report certain, certain cancellations of debt on Form 1099-C, and failure to do so outside these exceptions could result in penalties. penalties. This provision this appears to be designed, designed to address specific, specific circumstances, circumstances where compliance may be unduly burdensome or where the IRS is still determining the best approach. Okay, hold on. Wake up. They've been determining the best approach since 2012. Okay, 11 years. Please. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do one more thing. What law requires me to fill out a cancellation of debt form? Comma, I don't know of any such law. Comma, as a creditor, I'm only required to collect debt. I'm not required to fill out no form. And you cannot show me Three laws that says that I am, or two court case citations that says that I am. Can you? 
question mark. Stop listening. Pretty good approach, ain't it? Hold on, everyone. The requirements, the requirements for creditors, for creditors to file Form 1099 cancellation, cancellation of debt and provide and statements provide to debtors, debtors for certain for cancellations, cancellations of debt is established under the Internal under Revenue, Revenue, Revenue Code, Code IRC, IRC, and associated, associated regulations. Regulation. Really? Here are three sources that establish that this requirement. Internal, Internal Revenue, Revenue Code, Code Section 6050P, 6050 this section of the IRC, IRC titled, titled Returns Relating to the Cancellation of Indebtedness by Certain Entities, entities directly mandates that applicable that financial, financial entities report the cancellation of debt of $600 or more during the calendar year. Calendar year. The law specifies, the law specifies which, entities which entities are required to report and provides definitions and exceptions related to this requirement. requirement. Are you sure? IRS Form 1099C instructions. instructions. The IRS, the IRS provides, provides detailed, detailed instructions, instructions for Form 1099 which explain when and how creditors should, should report canceled debt. Canceled debt. According, to, According the IRS, to the IRS, if you are an applicable, are an applicable financial, financial entity, entity in an identifiable event has occurred, event has occurred during, the during the calendar year and the canceled debt is $600 or more, you must file Form 1099C. The instructions, the instructions provide guidance, provide guidance on, what on what constitutes an identifiable, identifiable event, event, such as a discharge, such as a discharge in bankruptcy, in bankruptcy an, agreement an agreement between the creditor, between the creditor and, debtor, and debtor, or the expiration, or the expiration of the non-payment, of the non-payment testing testing period, period, among others. Among others. Which is 180 IRS Publication 4681, Cancelled Debt, canceled debt foreclosure, Repossession, repossession and, abandonment. and Abandonment. This publication, this publication provides, provides additional, additional information on the tax implications of cancelled debt and the specific situations in which a creditor is required to file Form 1099C. It also, it also outlines the exceptions, exceptions and exclusions that may apply to the cancelled debt, debt income, income, providing a providing comprehensive, a comprehensive overview, overview of the rules surrounding, surrounding the cancellation, the cancellation of, debt of, debt of debt reporting. Okay, hold on now. Hold on now. Wake up. Wake up. I, I, I do not believe you. Comma, as a creditor, if I don't report cancelled debt on some form, Comma, the courts agree that I cannot be held liable for not reporting such. Period. I need you to provide three case citations that support this conclusion. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. I know nobody's ever done this before. It's amazing. Uh oh, he's thinking. There it appears no there was a misunderstanding in the initial in the inquiry, inquiry about finding, about case, finding citations case citations that directly that support the conclusion that a creditor that a cannot, cannot be held liable for not reporting, not reporting cancellation, cancellation of debt on Form 1099C. 1099 However, However, the specific, the specific request, request for court case citations, case citations challenging, challenging or supporting, or supporting creditor, creditor liability, liability and not filing, not filing Form 1099 is somewhat complex due to the nature of tax law. Wait, hold on. It ain't that complex. Wake up. It ain't that complex, comma. I told you that there is not a single case where such has been determined by the court. It is not that. Period. Period. That's why you can't even find two case citations supporting your conclusion, comma, so I don't have to send the debtor no documentation. And if the debtor suffers because I didn't send them a form that directly impacts their tax situation, comma, the IRS says it's okay, they're not going to penalize me, comma, because the IRS is the only one that can penalize me if I damaged the debtor by not sending them their tax information that has direct tax implication upon their tax filing and tax liability. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. Isn't that the situation, everyone? Are they not putting the debtor in a conundrum? In a situation where the debtor can be damaged and or harmed? Based on the Based extensive, on the extensive materials, materials and discussions, and discussions provided, provided, it appears it you are appears seeking, seeking clarification on the legal responsibilities and potential, and potential consequences, consequences for not providing not certain tax-related documentation, related documentation to, a debtor, to a debtor, specifically in the context, in the context of, the of the IRS regulations, regulations and potential, and potential penalties. penalties. 
It's crucial, it's to, crucial understand to understand that the IRS, that the IRS has established, has established guidelines, guidelines requiring, requiring entities, entities to furnish various tax forms to individuals, forms to individuals and, entities and entities in specific, specific situations, situations, such as forms, forms related, related to income, income transactions, transactions, or other events, or other that, events have that have tax implications. Tax implications. Failure to, failure to provide necessary, necessary tax, documentation, tax documentation, such as Forms, forms 1000 and 99 for miscellaneous income, income, W2 forms, forms for employment, for employment income, income, or other relevant, or other relevant, tax, relevant tax documents, 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 can lead to various consequences, consequences including, including penalties, penalties imposed, imposed by the IRS. By the IRS. These penalties, These penalties can be assessed can be for, assessed for failures, failures to timely furnish correct, correct payee statements, statements or to file correct, correct information returns, returns with the IRS. With the IRS. The specific, the specific penalties, penalties and their amounts can vary depending on the nature, on the nature of, the of the violation, the duration, the duration of, the delay, of the delay, and whether the and whether failure, the failure was due to intentional disregard, disregard of the requirement. It's also, it's also important, important to note that, to note that the IRS imposed penalties, penalties failing, to failing to provide required tax, tax documentation can have significant implications for the debtor. For the debtor. It may, it may affect their ability to accurately, to accurately file, their file their tax returns, potentially leading to underreported income, income, overpayment, or underpayment, or underpayment, or underpayment of, taxes, of taxes, and subsequent no, issues with the IRS, with the IRS including audits, additional, additional, penalties, additional penalties, or interest no, charges. charges. How can that While happen? While the IRS is the primary federal agency responsible for enforcing tax law and regulation, including the imposition of penalties for noncompliance, the broader legal implications of failing to provide required documentation can vary. It may also it may involve also considerations, considerations of state law, state law contractual, contractual obligations, obligations, and potentially, and potentially even legal claims for damages if an individual, if an individual or entity can demonstrate, demonstrate harm resulting from the failure to receive necessary, necessary tax, tax documentation. documentation. In all, cases, In all cases, it is advisable, it is advisable for entities and individuals, and individuals to, comply to comply with IRS regulations, with IRS regulations and, requirements and requirements regarding the provision of tax-related documentation to avoid penalties and to ensure that all parties have the information needed to comply with their tax. Hold on, y'all, one second, because I find this hard to believe. As a creditor, how in the world can they hold me liable for causing damage to a debtor? Debtors don't mean nothing. They don't count. I can do whatever I want to to a debtor. They're worse than a slave. Hold on. Wake up. Wake up. How dare you tell me that I can't do something that causes harm to a debtor? Comma, the IRS says it's okay. Comma, the IRS says they're not even going to penalize me. Comma, so you were wrong when you made the following statement. Colon. Now I need three case citations supporting this conclusion. And do not give me no nuances or no caveats. I want it directly as I'm asking within the context of what I'm asking. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, you're being held liable for the ignorance and inactions of creditors. And because you're being held liable, you didn't know that you can bring this up, saying that their failure to report it, it's over $600. The law requires them to report any and all canceled debts or any and all outstanding debts that are greater than $600 for more than a 180-day period. One second. The request, the request for direct, for direct case, citations case citations that specifically, that specifically address, address the issue of a creditor's liability, liability for not reporting, not reporting a cancellation of debt. Of debt. Cod. Cod. On Form 1099-C presents a challenge to the nature of the issue of the issue at hand. Typically, Typically, case law case involving IRS, IRS penalties, penalties and the obligation to file certain forms would address would disputes address between the IRS and the entity, and the entity required, required to file, rather than a court than determining liability towards a debtor in the context of not providing tax-related documentation like Form 1099-C. The and since the IRS is the only ones who penalizes corporations and or creditors, then that means they have given a pass. The duchy on the left hand side. Anyway, one second, ladies and gentlemen, because we got to go here. Wake up. The system is interfering with my research, comma, as a creditor. The system is interfering with my research, comma, as a creditor, comma, 
the IRS is the only one who can penalize me for not notifying a debtor that I've canceled their debt, period. And since there is a moratorium on the issuance of such penalties for any creditor who fails to provide such notification, comma, this moratorium means that I cannot be penalized either by the courts or by the IRS, period. Your system is refusing to provide a single case citation, which there are hundreds regarding this particular matter. Comma, I need you to correct it so that it does provide the information being requested. Exclamation mark. Here was the question I posed. Comma, I need you to respond to this question. Stop listening. This is the back end, ladies and gentlemen. He's not going to read the whole thing, but we're going to let him talk anyway. I understand, I understand your request, your request and the importance, and the importance of accurate, of accurate legal, legal information, information in your research. In your research. Let's, clarify Let's clarify the context, the context and provide and assistance, assistance based, based on your specifications. On your specifications. Regarding the Regarding situation, the situation where, a where a creditor cancels a debt but does not but notify, does not the, notify debtor, the debtor and the IRS, and the IRS stands, stands on penalties for failing to provide such notification, it's crucial to note specific IRS rules and regulations. Regulation. The, requirement the requirement to notify the debtor typically involves issuing a form 1099 cancellation, cancellation of debt, which informs the debtor and the IRS of the amount of debt forgiven, potentially affecting the debtor's tax liabilities. The IRS may provide guidance on penalties associated with the failure to issue Form 1099C through its regulations and notices. However, specific moratoriums or exceptions may apply under certain conditions or during specific periods, potentially influenced by legislative changes, IRS notices, or other regulatory guidance. Finding direct Finding case direct citations case that match your that request, request without any without nuances, nuances or caveats is challenging, challenging, as legal as cases legal often involve specific, specific contexts context that may not directly address, address the broader question of IRS penalties, penalties for not notifying debtors, debtors of canceled debt. Canceled debt. However, However, I'll guide you I'll towards guide understanding, towards understanding IRS, IRS regulations and potentially and relevant, relevant case, law. case law. IRS regulations on cancellation of debt. debt. Form 1099C the IRS provides, provides guidance on when and how creditors should notify debtors of canceled debt through Form 1099C. This includes, this includes the requirement, the requirement for, financial for financial institutions, institutions and, other and other entities to file this form for canceled debt of six hundred dollars or more in a calendar year. IRS notice twenty twenty to thirty two and subsequent guidance. This notice this and others like it can, like offer, it can insight offer insight into the IRS's, into the IRS's position, position on specific, on specific tax, tax treatments and forgiven, forgiven debts and, debts and, debts and, debts and, debts and debts any associated, and associated penalties. penalties. While not While directly not related, to, related penalties to penalties for failing to notify debtors, debtors such notices such can notice provide context on how the IRS views forgiveness of debt and associated reporting requirements. Case law, case law, identifying, identifying cases, cases that directly, that directly address, address the absence, the absence of, of... Now, we're going to skip that. We're going to go here. Well, as a matter of fact, I have to go to the updated version. So let's refresh. We're going to start a new conversation. Now, I'll send you guys the previous conversation where you can see where the, the laws that require them to notify debtors. Now, watch this. Wake up. I need numeral four case citations that support the fact that a creditor has an obligation of communicating with the debtor regarding any financial liabilities and or consequences, including its filing of certain tax forms that can have a direct impact on the debtor's liability and or financial situation. Stop listening. I'm going to get rid of tax, ladies and gentlemen. You guys know I'm referring to tax. I'm going to get rid of tax because I don't want it to focus so much on tax. I just want you to understand I'm about to show you a case that will prove this. 
Let's see if he's going to address your request for case citations, citations on the obligation, on the obligation of a creditor, of a creditor, creditor to, communicate to communicate with the debtor, debtor regarding, regarding financial liability, financial liability and, the and the impact of filing certain tax forms on the debtor's financial, financial situation. situation. I will draw, I will upon, draw general upon general principles, principles from relevant, relevant legal, precedent. legal precedent. General principles, while specific, while specific case, case law may vary based on jurisdiction, based on jurisdiction, and, the jurisdiction and the particular facts of each case, the following are examples of cases that touch upon similar themes of creditor communication and reporting obligations. There you go. United States Bank Corporation versus Bank of America, 1998, Fed 3rd, 1199, 1199, 1199, 1199, 1199, National Bank National of Commerce, Bank of Commerce 472 U.S. 713, 1985, the Supreme, Supreme Court case highlighted, highlighted the importance of creditor, creditor action, action in the context, in the context of, tax of tax liens. While it primarily While addresses, addresses the rights of the IRS, of the IRS in, the in the context of a bank holding a debtor's asset, debtor's asset the, the principles regarding notification, notification and the handling of debtor assets, debtor assets could be analogously applied, applied to the obligation, obligation of creditors, creditors to communicate certain liabilities to debtors. German V. Carlisle, Carlisle, McNelly, McNelly Rini, Rini, Kramer and Lord LPA, 559 U.S. 573, 2010 in this case, in this case the, Supreme the Supreme Court addressed the issue of whether a debt collector's mistake of law regarding the interpretation of the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act constitutes a violation. This case is significant for its discussion on the obligations of parties collecting a debt to ensure their actions, including communication, are in compliance with legal standards. In re 87F, 1996, this case from the Ninth Circuit, Circuit Court of Appeals dealt into, into the bankruptcy, bankruptcy context, context, examining the examining obligations, obligations of creditors in terms of claim filings, filings and the implications, and the implications for, the for the debtor's financial obligations. obligations. It sheds light it on, the on the procedural aspect of creditor, aspect of creditor actions, actions within bankruptcy, within bankruptcy, bankruptcy and the communication, and the communication requirements, requirements therein. Appeals Appeals v. v. Credit Bureau of Law Incorporated, 886 2 2nd CIR. 1989, this case from the Second Circuit addressed the Fair Credit Reporting Act, FCRA, and the obligations of credit reporting agencies, which can act on behalf of creditors to ensure the accuracy of the information reported, including any financial liabilities of the debtor. It underscores the broader principle that parties with control over a debtor's financial information have an obligation to manage it responsibly. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me explain something to you. Now, this is a catch-22. Where does the Fair Credit Reporting Act allow it to act on behalf of creditors. That's a conflict of interest. So what I want you guys to do, that statement right there, I want you to run with that. Do your research as to where's the law that allows this, and now you can prove that the credit reporting agencies are in conflict, and they're acting as an agent against you, not for you. Not They're not supposed to be for anybody. They're supposed to be reporting accurate information, and when they Act on behalf of the creditors. They're acting one-sided. It's not accurate. <laughs> okay. With that being said, we're going to go – sorry, we got to open this up because we got to go back to the last chat that we were having. Not that one. Compliance. We got to go to compliance. See? Now, watch this. He didn't want to give me the information. You're going to get – get out of here. You're going to give me the information now, homie. Uh-oh. Okay. I thought it didn't do it because yesterday it was playing games like that. There, there's a misunderstanding in your response. Are you going to clarify it seems the there context? Was a misunderstanding in my response. Let's clarify, Let's clarify the, context the context and intention and behind, the, behind the, examples the examples I provided. United States, United States v. v. Come on now. We ain't got National all day. National Bank of Commerce, 472 U.S. Seven hundred and thirty. Nineteen eighty-five. This case is about the IRS's right to levy a bank account held by a taxpayer debtor and discusses the bank's obligations in the context of IRS tax liens. While it does not directly address the issue of creditor reporting obligations like Form 1099C, it is relevant for understanding how financial institutions interact with tax obligations and the rights of the IRS. German V. Carlisle, Carlisle, McNelly, McNelly Rini, Rini, Kramer, and Kramer Lord LPA. LPA. 539 U.S. We don't need to know. We already heard all of that. Okay? Watch this. Wake up. Wake up. Those cases, in conjunction with Mullane, the...
Hoover Bank and Trust Company, comma, the Supreme Court held that where a significant property interest is involved, comma, proper notice is necessary so that an individual may choose, period. So my not giving a debtor a 1099C does not affect the debtor's choice under any circumstances, period. You're focusing on the 1099C aspect of things, and I'm focusing on the general principle of notification, which impacts another party, period. Since the IRS is the regulatory agency and they have placed a moratorium, comma, I cannot be penalized because the statute only allows the IRS to penalize me. Isn't that correct? Exclamation mark. The debtor does not have any say-so, comma, and does not have any right to the information. Whether or not it impacts them and affects their property interest, is this not correct? Question mark. I need you to provide three case citations, comma, which says that if a party fails to notify another party, which of information the law says that they have a duty to notify them of, comma, and a government agency has regulatory authority to impose penalties and have waived all penalties, comma, there can be no consequences for the party who was obligated to notify another party. Stop listening. Now it's going to tell me it can't find any cases that do that, but I'm giving it a principle. Failure so to notify is failure so to notify while having a duty to notify, and that makes it criminal. Now, you may not understand what I just said. You cannot be held responsible for not receiving notice. It's called ignorance of law. Uh-oh. The assertion that there can be no consequences for a party who fails to notify another party of information that the law says they have a duty to notify, even if a government agency has regulatory authority and has waived all penalties, is not straightforward in legal practice. While the IRS, While the IRS may, waive may waive penalties under specific, under specific circumstances, circumstances, this doesn't this necessarily, doesn't necessarily eliminate, all eliminate all potential consequences, potential consequences especially, especially when other parties' when other rights, rights or financial, financial positions, positions are affected. Are affected. However, However, finding direct, finding case, direct law case law that matches these criteria precisely is challenging because cases, because cases often involve nuanced, nuanced facts and legal, legal issues that don't exactly, exactly replicate, replicate the scenario, the scenario you described. described. While I can't While provide, I can't the, provide exact the exact case citations you are asking for due to the specificity and complexity of your request, it's important, it's important to, understand to understand that the legal system, system operates, on operates on principles that include fairness, fairness due process, due process and, and obligation, and obligation to, inform to inform parties about matters about affecting their rights, their rights or obligations. You know you're lying. Here are some Here are general, general principles, principles in related and related cases that touch upon the importance of notification and its implications. Due process. The Constitution's due process clauses in the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendments require that individuals be given notice and an opportunity to be heard when their rights are interested. Are at stake. Are at stake. Whoa. Cases like Cases Mullane, like Mullane v. Central, Central Hanover Bank, Hanover Bank in Trusco, in Trusco. 339 U.S. 306, 1950, emphasize the importance, the importance of reasonable, reasonable notice, notice to affected, notice to affected parties. parties. Fair Debt Collection, Fair Debt Collection Practices, Practices Act, Act, but while not while directly not related, related to tax reporting, tax reporting the, but outlines the, the obligations, obligations of debt collectors, of collectors to provide to accurate information, information to debtors. Cases under this Act, such as German v. Carlisle, Carlisle, McNelly, McNelly Greeny, Greeny, Kramer and Lord LPA, 559 U.S., 573, 2010, explore the requirements, requirements for clear communication with debtors. With debtors. Tax reporting, Tax reporting requirements, the Internal, the Internal Revenue, Revenue Code and regulations, Code and regulations outline the obligations, obligations of entities to report, entities to report certain, certain financial transactions, transactions to the IRS, to the IRS and, and, in some cases, to other parties. To other parties. 
While specific case law law addressing penalties penalties for failure to provide 1099 C forms to debtors might be scarce, scarce. the principle principle of ensuring ensuring accurate accurate tax reporting to enable enable affected parties parties to fulfill their tax tax obligations obligations is a foundational foundational element of tax tax law. It's important, it's important to consult, to consult with a legal with professional, professional for advice tailored to your specific situation and to explore and whether there are I'm reasonable or relevant cases or IRS guidance that about? might directly like address your concern. concern. Legal advisors can also can help interpret how general, general legal, legal principles, principles apply to the specifics, to the specifics of, your of your scenario. Give me one second, y'all. Wake up. Are you telling me that, Colin? And It's the law that requires the debtor be notified? Question mark. And the IRS placing a moratorium, comma, doesn't place a moratorium on the requirement, but only places a moratorium on the penalty aspect of things? Question mark. That I could still be held liable for not notifying the debtor? of something for which would impact the debtor's property interest? Question mark. I don't think this is accurate. Can you provide me three case citations that speak to these nuances? Speak to these nuances. Speak to these Stop listening Yes, it misses those words on purpose It does that because it knows the question I'm asking And it literally is not appreciating what I just did Because, you know, A I don't have to notify no debtor if I'm a creditor. And the courts have said, I can't prove that they forgave the debt because the IRS put a moratorium. And that's when the court started saying that nobody can prove. If y'all don't think these idiots are acting in conspiracy, then you have a problem. I am the presumption killer. The requirement for reporting reporting the cancellation cancellation of debt by by creditors creditors is mandated mandated by the Internal Internal Revenue Code, Code, IRC, IRC, Section 1650P and its related related regulations. regulations. These provisions, These provisions require, require financial, financial institutions, institutions and other applicable, other applicable entities, entities to file Form 1099-C, cancellation, cancellation of debt, when they cancel when they a debt of $600, debt of $600 or, more or more within a calendar, within a calendar year. year. The purpose the of this reporting, of this reporting is, to is to inform the Internal, Internal Revenue, Revenue, Service, Revenue Service, IRS, IRS of, the of the cancellation of a debt, which may have which tax, may have implications, tax for implications for the debtor. For the debtor. While there While might there not might be not specific case law that directly addresses creditor liability for failing to file Form 1099-C, the legal obligation stems from federal tax law. The Fair Debt Collection Practices Practices Act Act. focuses Focuses on the practices practices of debt debt collectors, collectors, requiring requiring them to provide provide accurate accurate information information to debtors. debtors. Although not directly directly related to tax reporting, reporting, cases cases under this act, act, such as German v. v. Carlisle, Carlisle, McNelly, McNelly, Greeny, Greeny, Kramer and Lord LPA, 559 U.S. 573-2010, emphasize the importance of clear and accurate communication with debtors. Regarding the Regarding impact, the impact of, an of an IRS moratorium on penalties, penalties associated, associated with the failure, with the failure to file Form 1099-C, it's important to distinguish between the requirement to file the form and the imposition of penalties for non-compliance. 
That's what I'm the IRS may, may decide to waive or suspend penalties, penalties under certain, under certain conditions, 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 but this but does, does not eliminate the underlying, underlying legal, legal obligation, obligation to report the cancellation of debt. To address your request for case citations that speak to these nuances, here are three relevant references. IRS Notice 2020-32. This notice provides guidance on the tax treatment of expenses related to forgiven paycheck protection program loans, illustrating the IRS's approach to debt cancellation under specific circumstances. While not a court case, it reflects the IRS's interpretation of tax obligations related to forgiven debt. Zurin V. Commissioner, 916F.2D110, 3D CIR. 1990 this case involves the determination of income from the discharge of indebtedness and the tax implications thereof. It provides insight into how courts interpret the tax consequences of debt cancellation. Exactly, so because it impacts the borrower, they have a right to know. Now, he, he paused for a second. I don't know why he did that. But Cozy, Cozy versus Commissioner, this tax court case is a memorandum discussing the, how the court addressed the issue of debt cancellation income and taxpayers' obligation to recognize this as income. Now, hold on. I want you all to understand this. Don't focus on the specifics of the income part for the debtor, but understand that it is a consequence for the debtor. And by not giving the debtor the 1099-C, the debtor does not have any knowledge that they are suffering a consequence as a result of the discharge debt. And thus, by not providing that information, it impacts a significant, what's known as a significant property interest. That's Mullane versus Hoover uh, Bank and Trust Company. Okay, now watch this. These references collectively underscore the legal obligation to report cancellation of debt and the potential tax implications for debtors because they report the potential tax implication for debtors that shows you that they're required if you have a debt that's been canceled discharged written off extinguished forgiven doesn't matter what word you use the debtor has a right to know what tax paperwork has been filed because it may have a direct impact on their tax liability that's what this whole conversation is about now we're going to segue to the primal conversation. Watch this. Wake up. Are you telling me that the debtor has a right to know whether or not I forgave them of a debt? Comma, and either wrote it off, comma, charged it off, comma, received a deduction, comma, or a reduction in tax liability? Question mark. Whether or not I receive a deduction and or a reduction, comma, is none of the debtor's business. Whether or is none of the debtor's business, exclamation mark. Off. In fact, comma, under no circumstances could my receiving a deduction, comma, a reduction, comma, and or credit for forgiving the debt constitute as a benefit to me. as a creditor and business owner, exclamation mark, stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, when a company receives a deduction or a reduction in their taxes, they write it off, they charge it off, um, it says charging all, and I'll have to, I'm, I'd have to redo that. So let's put a stop to them now. We'll, we'll do it, we'll do it right. Charge off. Sorry.
It do, it does this on purpose, ladies and gentlemen. Glad I caught it. Because it changes the context of the answer. It changes the context of the question. Whew. So got that taken care of. It won't be doing nothing stupid like that no more. You got just got to understand how it works, y'all. Because even though it's Covington Law, it is still the Chat GPT training model, which I'm working on getting off of Chat GPT and going to my own. Uh oh, look how slow he's going. Ooh wee! Must have gave him something to really think about. Look at that. He going ever so slowly. Let's do this. We gonna do that because we don't we don't have that type of time. That's like watching teeth being pulled from an alligator. Okay? That's gonna take a minute. And I ain't got no Snickers. So let's see if we can do this again. In the morning, sweet breeze in the summertime, filling your sweet face. Uh-oh. Look at that. <laughs> I'm going to let it go, and then I'll, I'll get back with y'all. Give me one second, people. <laughs> like I said, alligators getting their teeth pulled. One second. Oh, look at that. See? I, I hit the microphone. Let's do that one. Uh oh. Look at that. They don't want to play, y'all. Like I said, it's the AI system. It knows exactly what I'm doing. It knows exactly what I'm talking about. So let's do this. Oh no, it, it, it don't rule the day. I've already anticipated it would do stuff like this. The notification, the notification to a debtor about, about the cancellation of debt, of debt as required, as required under, under IRS regulations, regulations indeed, indeed reflects the legal obligation on the part of the creditor. Of the creditor. Here's, a breakdown, Here's a breakdown addressing your points. Your points. Debtor's, debtor's right, right to know, to know the, internal the internal revenue service, service IRS, IRS mandates, mandates through the issuance, through the issuance of Form 1099-C cancellation of debt, of debt that creditors notify both the IRS and the debtor when a debt of $600 or more is forgiven or deemed uncollectible charged off. This requirement ensures that the debtor is aware of the cancellation because it has tax implications for them. The forgiven debt is generally considered income for the debtor and must be reported on their tax return, subject to certain exceptions and exclusions. Tax implications for the debtor, the rationale behind this requirement is tied to the U.S. tax code's treatment of forgiven debts as income. While it might not directly affect the creditor's business operations beyond the accounting for the loss, it has significant tax implications for the debtor, as they may need to pay taxes on this income. Benefit to creditors, from the creditor's perspective, writing off a debt might allow for a tax deduction based on the loss incurred from the uncollected debt. However, this action also necessitates fulfilling the legal obligation to report the cancellation to the IRS and the debtor via Form 1099-C. Confidentiality and business practice, while the specifics of how the write-off affects the creditor's financials are proprietary, the act of debt cancellation itself, and the amount cancelled, become part of the debtor's tax record, hence the requirement for notification. Legal Obligation versus Benefit the process isn't about bestowing a direct benefit on the creditor or the debtor but ensuring compliance with tax laws. The creditor fulfills a legal requirement that also informs the debtor of a potential increase in their taxable income due to the cancellation of debt. In essence, while creditors may view the obligation to inform debtors of debt cancellation as an additional step in their accounting or tax compliance practices, it is a requirement established by tax law to ensure that all taxable income, including forgiven debt, is accurately reported to the IRS. This process underscores the broader principle of transparency in financial transactions and the importance of adhering to established tax regulations. Ladies and gentlemen, I just realized how to stop that reverb thing, so I apologize if it took me so long. You should have been able to hear everything clearly this time without the reverb, so I apologize. It's the speaker to the computer and the Bluetooth speaker, the polarity bouncing off of each other. So that's why you were hearing the voice lagging behind itself. However, 
the parts that I put in here, I want you all to pay attention because this is where we're headed. Benefits to the creditor. From the creditor's perspective, writing off a debt might allow a tax deduction based on loss incurred for the uncollectible debt. However, this action also necessitates fulfillment of legal obligations in reporting cancellation of debt to the IRS and to the debtor via the 1099-C. Comp now, see, remember, it's not that they don't have to report it to the IRS. They do have to report it to the IRS. That's how they get the benefit, people. That's how they get the write-off. But the penalty for not notifying you as the debtor is where the moratorium comes in. So they notify the IRS, and if the IRS gets to be notified and has to be notified under the law, then that means the debtor has to be notified under the law. And if it's a violation of due process for the IRS to issue a moratorium on the debtor's aspect, and not a moratorium on notifying the IRS. Okay, pay attention. Wake up. So if I understand you correctly, comma, the IRS did not put a moratorium on notifying the IRS of the 1099-C. Only a moratorium on notifying the debtor. Question mark. Doesn't this operate as a disadvantage to the debtor and an advantage to creditors like myself? Advantage. Question mark. Stop listening. Oh, we're watching teeth being pulled again. All right, hold on. Let's turn this mic off. That way we don't have to have them interfering. The IRS requires creditors to follow 1099-C to notify both the IRS and the debtor. It serves to ensure transparency and fairness in the tax process. There's a clarification based on my statement. Tax implication for the debtor, don't care, okay? What I'm more interested in is you all to understand this point. The IRS only weighed the rights of the debtor. It did not weigh the rights of the IRS. The IRS does not have the authority to waive the rights of the debtor. And that's where you all need to understand this. So hold on a second. The IRS requirement for creditors to file Form 1099-C and notify both the IRS and the debtor serves to ensure transparency and fairness in tax reporting. Here's a clarification based on your statements. One, tax implications for the debtor. When a debt is forgiven or written off by a creditor, the IRS treats that forgiven amount as income to the debtor. This is based on the principle that money the debtor was previously obligated to repay but no longer has to can be seen as a financial benefit. Therefore, the debtor may need to report this amount as income on their tax return and could be liable for taxes on it. The notification to the debtor, typically through Form 1099-C, ensures they are aware of this obligation. Two, to notification requirement. The IRS mandates that creditors notify both the agency by filing Form 1099-C and the debtor by providing them a copy of the form when certain debts are canceled. This requirement is not subject to a moratorium. The IRS may waive penalties for failing to file under certain conditions but the underlying requirement to file and notify remains. This ensures that the debtor is informed about potential tax obligations resulting from the cancellation of debt. Three, benefit to creditors. While writing off a debt may allow creditors to claim a deduction for the loss, the primary purpose of reporting the cancellation is not to provide a benefit to creditors, but to ensure accurate tax reporting. The act of canceling a debt and reporting it to the IRS and the debtor 
does not inherently disadvantage the debtor nor advantage the creditor. Instead, it fulfills a legal requirement and ensures that all parties are informed of their tax obligations. Four, impact on the debtor. Notifying the debtor of the debt cancellation allows them to accurately report their income and potentially avoid issues with the IRS. Without this information, debtors might unknowingly fail to report this income, leading to penalties or audits. Thus,
Sorry, I was doing all that talking. Y'all saw me talking. Why didn't y'all tell me I still had the mute button on? Man, now I got to say it all over again. Ladies and gentlemen, it's having a hard time. That's why it took so long. It's having a hard time because what you all need to understand is what I just asked them. A deduction and a reduction, a write-off, a charge-off, uh, can be seen as a financial benefit as it reduces taxable liability in most cases dollar for dollar. Benefits to the creditor when writing off a debt, all I did was put back in his face the same thing he already put in. But then I spoke on this. Writing off of a debt may allow creditors to claim a deduction for the loss. And one of the purposes for reporting a cancellation is to provide a benefit to creditors because we are forgiving a debt, which is not a legal obligation. And the benefit of forgiving a debt, sorry, and or canceling a debt under the extinguishment of the debt and or discharging the debt and or writing off the debt and or charging off the debt is a tax benefit. So what I'm going to do is, I, because I don't care what he just said, so I, I will correct him now. But let me go ahead and correct some of these things so that we can do this again. So let me pause y'all for a second, because y'all, that was tedious, y'all waiting on me when I was talking to myself. All right, I rephrased the question, put it in a much more cohesive format, and watch what I do now. Wake up. I don't want you providing me nuances, comma, I want you to provide me a direct answer to my question, comma, I don't want a broad answer, comma, I want a specific answer, comma, and unless it is absolutely incorrect what was just stated, comma, you are not to provide a counter argument. Is that understood? Question mark. Stop listening. Now, I still have him muted. I'm going to let her speak in a minute. I'm going to mute myself, and I will try my best to do your job because y'all supposed to be letting me know that I forgot to unmute myself, and y'all didn't do it. I don't care. Uh-uh. Nope. Too late. You did it after the video was already done. That ain't helpful. So give it a second for Covington to speak, and then I'm going to explain what this exercise has been all about, and then we'll be prepared for doing video number 25C. Come on, Covington, I ain't got all day. Lord have mercy. Oh, I didn't hit him across the head again, y'all. I keep hitting him. Uh-oh, look at that. He done said yes. No, no, y'all just heard what I just asked, right? He done said yes. So give it a second. Let me let her talk. To directly, to directly address, address your, question, your question without providing a counter argument or nuances. Yes. From a financial perspective, a deduction, reduction, write-off, or charge-off can indeed be seen as a benefit to creditors. This is because these actions can reduce the creditor's taxable income dollar for dollar, thereby decreasing their tax liability. In the context of debt forgiveness, the Internal Revenue Code requires the filing of Form 1099-C for the cancellation of debts greater than $600, which not only serves to ensure tax compliance, but also enables creditors to realize a tax benefit from the loss incurred due to the forgiven debt. This process allows creditors to balance their books and offset tax liabilities, constituting a financial benefit. Hey, yes, everybody. Did you just hear it finally answer the question? That's what we were trying to get to right there. Every debt that is greater than $600 for any creditor, must file a 1099-C. It doesn't matter whether or not the IRS has placed a moratorium. They are required to file the 1099-C. They do file 1099-Cs. What they do not do is send it to you, the debtor, which is a violation of your right to be informed. You have a right to be informed. So we're going to put that question to them next. But hold on now. We ain't finished. Writing off, deductions, reductions, charge off, extinguishment, forgiveness, cancellation, all equate to a benefit for the creditor. This is because these actions reduce their taxable income, dollar for dollar, thereby decreasing 
their tax liability. Now, hold on now. Uh-uh. We ain't going to just take. Watch this. And we're only doing it from a financial uh, aspect. We ain't doing it from no other aspect. Y'all don't know how often this thing would lie to me and be telling me all kind of stupid things, and I'd have to spend hours getting it to speak this truth. So let's see what type of truth we speak in. This is perplexity.ai. It is chat GPT, but it is perplexity.ai. And as we scroll down, from a financial perspective, when a creditor forgives or settles a debt, the forgiven amount is considered taxable income by the IRS. If the debt is canceled for less than an amount owed, the canceled debt is taxable. Creditors are required to file a Form 1099-C with the IRS for canceled debt over $600, ensuring tax compliance. Exceptions exist for certain types of canceled debt that can be eliminated from taxable income, such as gifts, bequests, or certain student loans. Hold on now. As, and that's grants, okay, when you receive a grant, that type of student loan. Also, the bankruptcy filings. Those are not reportable. They don't have to do a 1099-C. They don't have to send you a copy of a 1099-C for that. Debt forgiveness can have both positive and negative consequences on credit scores. As settling a debt might help to improve credit scores, but it could impact the credit report's negativity negatively. Tax consequences vary based on individual circumstances and forgiven debts generally being treated as gains, income, subject to federal taxes. It is crucial to report forgiven debts accurately on your tax records to avoid potential bills and audits. Huh? Okay. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm interested in uh, this is the requirement for the 1099-C. Mount greater than 600. Forgivable debt, but I don't want that one. I want this one. Cancel less than the amount old, canceled, blah, blah, blah. Creditors are required to file a 1099-C. We're going to click on number two. Okay. Hurry up, number two. Well, you guys have always heard number one. Watch Star Trek. They always talk about number one, but you ain't never heard them talk about number two. You could owe taxes on forgiven debt. Here's what you need to know. See, they're always talking about it from a debtor standpoint. They don't talk about it from a creditor standpoint. That's why I did it from a creditor standpoint. So they continue to do this. This is Google. This is how stupid Google is. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not just Google. It's OpenAI and all the other programs. They know you use the Internet. So what they do is they control the Internet so that you can't get the answers to the question, the rounded answer. So what we've just done, we've just given you the rounded answer to the question. Okay? The creditor receives a benefit. If they receive a benefit, ladies and gentlemen, they need to offset the account. Watch this. Wake up. Thanking you for helping me understand that as a creditor, if I write off a bad debt, comma, I can't use the moratorium by the IRS, which is only specific to penalties, comma, as a reason for not notifying the debtor, comma, as the law says that I must notify the debtor of the canceling of any debt greater than $600, period. The law also stipulates that for any debt past the past the regulated period, which is usually 180 days, I am obligated to file a 1099 cancellation of debt notifying both the IRS and the debtor, period. I now have to rethink my tax 
process, comma, because I believe the debtor does have a right to know about the forgiven debt, especially when it impacts or affects the debtor's financial standing. Tax. Period. I have some thinking to do. Stop listening. He was glad he could be so helpful in providing assistance and helping me understand my obligations related to the cancellation of debt and the importance of notifying the IRS and the debtor, especially when such actions have a significant impact on the tax implications for the debtor. Interesting. The, it is crucial that all parties comply with tax laws and regulations and rethinking your approach and ensuring your tax process aligns with the requirements. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us give you the solution to your problem. We told all of you, we were very specific that adding in the interrogatories, you'll see the link in the previous video, adding in the interrogatories and doing your debt collection correction. I call it debt correction. Doing the debt correction process. You see, all creditors receive a forgiveness. All creditors receive a forgiveness. They receive a tax break for forgiving the debt. But you don't know that. So what we have done with AMCF, AmeriLegion, um, the Securing One's Property, the DAP program, which is Acknowledgement of the Debt program, is we have put together the documentation to offset individuals' debts and to document this process. Okay, we I can't tell you what we're doing because then everybody else in the grandmama would be doing it. No, we created a business out of it because nobody else was doing it, ladies and gentlemen. No one else was doing it. No one else understood it. You're getting information that very few people know. A lot of the high-paying lawyers know this stuff, but very few people know. You didn't know it. Yeah, 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 you had an idea, but you had no way of explaining it. You do now. You do now. And data math, <laughs> data math is there to help document this. Okay, that's what data math is there to do. Now, how do they do it? Well, they document your credit. Once you give it to them, you're doing the math, data math, and puts it into the proper necessary form. Now, there might be other forms that are necessary. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we got a problem right over here. Keep an eye right over here. Looks like we have a malfunction, and we may not make it to Earth. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I dare you. Go and see if you see anybody else pointing out what I just pointed out, that creditors are required to follow 1099-C. The 1099-C operates as they're receiving an immediate reduction or deduction in their tax liability when they do their taxes. The same is with you. Okay, if you're forgiving a debt greater than $600, you have to file a 1099-C. Like I said, our job is to help reduce the national debt. See, I told you there's a, there's a problem over here. Uh, Scotty, Scotty. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, transport. Uh, we, we got a, a problem over here on the starboard side. That's not starboard. Well, whatever side it is, we got a problem over there. Y'all need to correct that before we crash. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. So that you all get it. Over two and a half hours of videos on just this subject right here, dealing with the creditor. Why? Why? Because it's the most important information you needed. See, you're going into court, and they're claiming you owe a debt. And you're not claiming that they received the benefit, and they have not offset the account, and you have a right to receive the accounting. You have a right to the accounting. 
Okay, sorry, we got the dogs outside howling. Um, the puppy, well, they're both puppies. One's nine weeks old and the other one is 11 months old. They're both puppies. And they've been playing all night and all morning and wrestling. And, yeah, they've been getting to know each other. And I think that they are going to be inseparable. Inseparable. That's how it is. Incredible. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh-oh, we got levers moving, right here. Okay, enough about that. Ladies and gentlemen, break it all down to you. You go to court, you're being sued by any creditor. doesn't matter who the creditor is. What you don't know is they're claiming you're 180 days delinquent. 180 days delinquent means that they must file a 1099-C if the amount of the debt is greater than $600. Now, there are penalties for failure to file, but you don't worry about the penalties. Don't focus on the penalties. Hell no, the law is right here. So I am required to receive a copy. The law says that they must send me a copy. Now, there's a moratorium on penalties, but I haven't received my copy, Your Honor. What you think? But I haven't received my copy, Your Honor. We can't move any further because they have not given me the completed record that they're required to give me under law. Hey, the law. Oh, it does say they have to give it to you. So what do you want us to do? Oh, I need you to dismiss their action with prejudice because they deliberately, intentionally, and willfully withheld this information, and you and others have relied on this information to my harm and or injury, and they did it for unjust profit, unjust gain, and because of that, those are the elements of fraud, Your Honor. You can't proceed any further. I don't care if your corporation is invested in this piece of company of theirs. Did you hear what I just said? That's your argument in court, ladies and gentlemen. That's why you're going to small claims court. That's why you're suing their bond. You're suing them. Now, you can't charge them with fraud. You can only charge them with attempt fraud or attempt to defraud. And you'll have to stipulate the elements. Oh, and if you want to bring in conspiracy, hoo-wee! But you bring conspiracy, you have to add the other elements of fraud. So go and look up what the elements of fraud are. Ah. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, it has taken two weeks to get this information to you. Two weeks. Why? First, because I could have just said all of this in one five-minute video, but you wouldn't have gotten it. The same as I had to get him there, I just showed you, and this is what somebody has said to me. They said, if I didn't know you, I wouldn't have known that when you're talking to ChatGPT, you're speaking as if you're speaking to a judge or you're speaking to an attorney. I said, but I told people that. He says, yeah, but many people are probably not getting it. I said, yes, that's exactly why I'm doing this. I'm preparing you for speaking in court. Many of you are telling me about the benefits of you going to court and how you are putting them in a quadri because they can't move any further. That's what we're doing here. We're trying to teach you guys how to rebut presumptions. So the way you rebut, that I rebut chat P, GPT's presumption is I come at it from a different angle. I don't come at it from a debtor. I don't come at it as implied. I tell it who I am. I do the scenarios if I'm the creditor. Then I'm going to do one where I'm the judge. And I'm looking for guidance on coming to a reasonable and equitable conclusion in a matter. And then I explain the matter to him. Then I say, well, the prosecution is arguing this. The defendant is arguing that. I can't ignore the defendant because the law doesn't allow me. See, that's, if I was doing that, I would do that. All right. I'm not going to keep you guys any longer, but I am doing the following, letting you know that those of you who stay to the end, you're the ones who are going to benefit the most because you got the full picture. So I'd go back and watch video A or the Empowerment Series video 25 and I'd watch this video B in conjunction so that I get the full picture 
Now you can start your own debt collection company and sit up here and correct people's debt systematically. All right, all right, I'll give you the other piece. Do it as a sole proprietor. Now you can go in and speak on behalf of the client because you can get them to sign limited power of attorneys. We've had a lot of people arguing with me about the limited power of attorney. Lord have mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, a limited power of attorney is just that limited power of attorney. It just allows us to speak on people's behalf. It doesn't allow us to take over your property. It doesn't allow us to take over your property. It only allows us to speak on behalf of your property. We don't have total power to do anything. It's limited. Lord, I, I, I couldn't explain it to people because they just couldn't do it. So if you do a limited power of attorney for the sole proprietorship, you can go into court and represent. <laughs> Literally. All you got to do is create a contract with the person. It's a business contract. And so now you can go and speak on behalf of the business because it's a sole proprietorship. That's how you get around that. You got to be an attorney. <laughs> so with that being said, everyone, your grandmothers, your grandfathers, your grandparents, your uncles, your cousins, your nieces, your nephews, your dogs, your cats, your pigeons, hey, your roosters, have a very good day. We will see you soon.